All praise goes to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rechai Kodash. Double honors goes into the apostles, elders, great millstone that taught us this truth. Much love and peace and blessings goes out to all the hopeful elect that are teaching the word of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So this is going to be another lesson. I'm going to play this video and get into the meat of this lesson. Thousands of soldiers out on the streets in response to these stunning images that have shocked South Africans. Looting on a massive scale, windows smashed, hundreds of stores set on fire, police often outnumbered and overwhelmed. A desperate scene at this building torched by rioters, a mother threw her toddler into the safe arms of a crowd below. More than 200 have died, 10 killed in a stampede during looting at this supermarket. Everything in here has been destroyed. There is nothing left to salvage except for a few shelves, but no goods. The violence is sparked by the arrest of former President Jacob Zuma, under investigation for corruption and fraud, but still popular among many poor South Africans. The instigators want to spread instability in the country. Half of South Africans live below the poverty line. Today, they're left with even less, waiting hours in line for food, fuel, and medicine. This pharmacist's business was looted. He told me he lost everything and is not sure how he'll feed his family. What's left? Nothing. Nothing. Stop. All the stock computers gone. Late tonight, the president called the violence a coordinated, deliberate attack intended to destabilize the country and vowed to bring those responsible to justice. All right, so there you have it, man. That's kind of a coverage of what's going on there in South Africa. And basically, there's a situation of turmoil and, and chaos really happening right now. And, um, you know, as you can tell, it's sparked by a few political instances for one political uh, incident and where the former president got arrested for uh, claims of corruption, but also what's going on in South Africa. It said over 50% of, of the South Africans are living below poverty, the poverty line. So they're, they're poor in their own country. Uh, and, and you can bet on it being that majority of them are Hamite and Jake South Africans, those whose ancestors, um, Thrived off that land for a millennia before, you know, that current system or that current uh, hierarchy was established in South Africa in which, you know, you got the white South Africans, Edomites, which are really Edomites that colonized that that part of, quote unquote, Africa. And, you know, now they're running the country. They control the mines, the lands, the um, the the uh, businesses and, and government and all these things. Right. They invaded those people's lands and caused them to be in poverty. So now we have, you know, by process of time, all the chickens coming home to roost. The the South Africans, uh, the natives don't want nothing to do with this bullshit. So now they're rioting and everything. But as we look at it all in all, according to the spirit, this is biblical judgment being played out because, you know, the scriptures tell you how you're not supposed to remove your neighbor's, neighbor's landmark. You know what I'm saying? It's for this devil, Esau, Edom, to um, actually be in that land, which was something that was already appointed to another people, is wicked in itself. And it shows you how the judgment of how Bashem Shai always stands true because these same people which were oppressed are rising up against them. And it's not just South Africa itself. It's the whole entire world. This devil took Europe. This devil took parts of Asia. He took North America, uh, South America, Central America, the Caribbean islands, all the earth. The scriptures say the earth is given into the hand of, of the wicked. So you got all these different demographics of people around the earth that are oppressed in their own nation due to them being robbed and spoiled of their own lands. You know, and this was all appointed from Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, because Yahweh Bashim Yahushai gave Esau the sword and the weaponry, the tools. He was blessed with this from the time when Isaac gave his forefather Esau the blessing. And his blessing came into fruition in the 1500s, late 1400s, when he got, you know, the sword and and uh, uh, fleets of, of ships to go and invade people's lands and kill them and take them over and, and XYZ, start wars and chaos and subversion. 
he's gained so much throughout that, that period of time. But now we see the earth rising up against him. Now we see the earth uh, being against Esau Edom, you know, and the chief house, which is responsible for all, a lot of destruction and, and chaos on the earth. If you want to just go back 50 to 100 years is America, because America is that so, so called fist of Esau Edom's, if you want to call it a fist of Esau Edom's power structure. That stamped on all the nations of the world with their military weapons and bombing people and uh, uh, CIA operations where they, you know, uh, uh, sell out leaders of countries and have them get on their payroll to to impoverish their people and take uh, their own people's resources and shit. So this chaos that's happening in different pockets of the world is going to come to America in a full blown scale. You see what I'm saying? Because America is the chief seat of these Edomites, which we, uh, which we speak of being uh, robbers, murderers, and so forth. Killers, uh, man stealers, land stealers. You see? So America's going to get it worse. Because I got this article from Natural News. It says, South African chaos will come to America. So you got Edomites. This this website is ran by Edomite. You got people out there that can put two and two together and see that these situations going on around the earth, it's only a matter of time before it comes to America because, you know, even the climate that was happening in America is the perfect powder keg for something to erupt here and all hell break loose over here too. You got Jake over here in America living below the poverty line, pissed off. You know, their woman got him on child support you know what I'm saying? The people are bugged out on antidepressants and addicted to drugs. Don't know what the fuck is going on. They don't have no morality. So what's going to happen when, you know, something sets them over the edge? Same thing was happening in South Africa, except worse. Because those South Africans was running around with sticks and rocks and shit, breaking into shit, stealing shit. But Americans got guns, man. Americans got guns, m missile launchers, all kind of crazy shit. So it's going to be worse here. So it says farms burn, power infrastructure destroyed, rule of law in total collapse. Here's how to survive it all. And the only answer of how to survive it in America is the spirit of the Lord. If the spirit of the Lord is not with you, you are going to be put to death, man, in this chaos or in some other instance. It says this crisis has been entirely engineered by globalists. See, that's Esau having his wicked hand in these different operations, man. It says it's all part of the chaos that they want to see erupt all over the world. Why? So they can introduce the RFID microchip. They can introduce a system of order to uh, combat the chaos. And this, the order which they want to impose is the new world order. It's something that's not beneficial because when you think of order, you think of something good. So it's, it's, it's the opposite of, you know, people running in my house and killing me. No, but this order comes with a foot on your fucking neck. Um, there was one quote by one quote unquote, uh, conspiracy theorist, I forget his name, but he said, if you want to visualize the new world order and what it's going to be, you can, you can imagine a boot stumping a human's face perpetually. Do you see what I mean? That's the order that, which they're coming with. It says largely due to loss of jobs, food scarcity and lockdown tyranny. So part of this lockdowns is, you know, you know, was proposed to irritate the people into what they're doing now. And that's going to come to America. It says the impoverished South African citizens are rising up to lash out in anger. As in often the case, they are irrationally overreacting, now burning down the very infrastructure. And you know why? Because people think in a mob mentality. People aren't meant to lead on them on the, by themselves. And the South African government, which are supposed to be their kings, their chiefs, their rulers, right? They're corrupt. They're not giving anything for these people. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> now the people are, you know, sticking to their guns and without leadership, without that true, uh, you know, foundation. They just looting and killing, burning shit, acting like animals. It says now burning down the very infrastructure that might provide them with food, electricity and fuel for, re for years to come. This is all by design. And the situation is rapidly imploding into a failed state or a civil war, depending on whom you ask. 
There are key realizations you need to grasp about what's happening in South Africa. This engineered chaos is coming to America and other Western nations soon for many of the same reasons. The destruction of infrastructure will lead to long term destitution, famine, collapse and war, which, you know, it makes me think like shit. If if if, if uh, they was to make that move to arrest Donald Trump, throw him in jail. Hey, these Edomites out here going to go crazy, just like just like uh, in South Africa, man, the ham mice in South Africa. It says the police are overrun and out of ammunition. They are largely helpless against the looting masses. Only civilian security forces or militias are providing effective safety and security for residential communities. Food is extremely scarce. Mass famine has already begun. Those who did not prep in advance may die. Gun control me means you die because only those with firearms are able to defend themselves and stop the looting mobs. So, A, hey, this is this is crazy, man. This is what's going on. So let's read a bit more. Globalists, which are the Edomite elite, the, the elites of Esau, Edom, are deliberately plunging the world into chaos, civil unrest and collapse. So, I mean. There you have it, man. There's a few things going on in America as far as the, you know, I mentioned before the political scene, how they totally supplanted Trump for that election and cheated his ass out of the out of the election. A lot of Americans are still pissed off about that. You know, you got this whole Black Lives Matter divisive uh, situation, you know, that divisive movement, if you will, set up by the CIA and other uh, people. To cause that division here. So it just takes, like I mentioned, the power decay it just takes that one spark and it's going to go up here, man. And it's not going to go up in a good way. It's going to go up in a very chaotic way, very chaotic fashion. So this is uh, Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told you before, and this is part of measuring the times, which is observing the signs which are going on in the in the earth right now. You got famines, you got uh, wars happening in different parts of the world. You got the pestilence, which is that C19 uh, uh, virus, man. So come on. It says, then thou shalt understand. So when we see this, this will we understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And it's time because we see the people, you know, even though all this shit is going on, who's truly repentant? No, everybody's waxing worse. They're getting more into criminality and stealing from each other. I seen one video. Um. This chick, this dude was trying to mack down two chicks, right? She, They had ended up in the parking lot. And the chicks basically told him to go to the parking lot. And two of the guys that they know pulled up and tried to arm rob this guy. And it was a Jake. It was a so-called black man. And two other so-called black men rolled up on him and then tried to commit an armed robbery on this guy. But the dude with the Jake actually pulled his, you know, his gun out and started shooting them niggas. You know what I'm saying? So it shows you the type of mindset people are in as we approach uh, this chaos, the purge, this purging process is going to take place. The Lord is going to, in a plethora of ways, eliminate all these undesirables that don't care about his, 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 his word. It says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and upwards of the people in the world. So this is a part of the sign. That's why I brought this out. Upwards of the people. What's happening in South Africa is an uproar of the people. We've seen several. We've seen situations that happened in, like, what is that, Taiwan? When they was riding out there, France, riding the Yellow Jacket uh, protests. And then now they're riding over, uh, you know, the Maxine passports and shit. <laughs> yeah, certain shit going down in London. Uh, different situations in the United States, different situations in, in so-called Latin America. It's been going on for years and it's only getting worse. Um, then shall, no matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll get the different one now. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse 14. It says, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark 
which they of old time has set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. So this was a, 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 a commandment from the Lord not to remove the landmarks of the, you know, of the ancient peoples when we went into Canaan to possess Canaan. We weren't to go into the surrounding nations and take their land. But this is a decree as well to not take the portions away from nations with the Lord has has decreed for them. Right. So Esau, he does this. He goes into China. He goes into South Africa, parts of Europe, which he does not belong to him, takes it over, kills the people, puts the people under his subjection. So, but, you know, this is the nature of. Of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you you go against his word and it will come back to bite you. And all these situations which the Lord um which or I should say which Esau he put himself in that. He put himself in a position to get fucked up by South Africans because he went in there and took their land. <laughs> so now they're rising up against his ass. So this is Deut uh Micah chapter two. Uh Two and one, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And who is this woe being pronounced upon? Esau Edom. Because as soon as the morning be light, what do they do? They commit evil. They commit iniquity from sun up to sun down and all down all through the night. Plotting on taking, killing, pillaging, looting. All these things which he's done. You know. Hold on. I want to get this word for, for practice. For the word for practice is Aisha. And it means uh to make or accomplish, to appoint, to commit, to procure, to do. So that's what they do. When they practice something, that's what they do. They're, that's something that they are involved with heavily. It's their task. It's their job. It's Esau's job to commit iniquity, man. It says, and they co covet fields and take them by violence. So how was South Africa given to them Edomites, them descendants of them damn Englishmen and shit? By violence. It says, and, how, and Dutchmen and shit, violence. And houses and take them away. So they oppress, oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. So that's oppression to take away a man's fucking uh, resources. Because rightfully it belongs to him. Rightfully, when, when a land is given to a nation, everything within their within their borders is theirs. So you to funnel that to yourself when it was not given to you from the most high is oppression. You know, taking away from someone is oppression. At the very, at the very, you know, common sense of, of that word, which it means to oppress, to press down, to put the squeeze on someone. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, against this family do I devise an evil. So Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has devised evil. He has an evil plan <laughs> against these devils, man, from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall ye go haughtily, for this time is evil. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with the doleful lamentation and say, We be utterly spoiled. He hath changed the portion of my people. Hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. See, and this is the narrative that's going on throughout the earth. Recognizing Esau for who he is, the colonizer, the oppressor, the raper, you know, the rapist, the, 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 the divider of fields, the covet, the coveter. That's what he is. You know, because the people have, have have realized they're coming to the realization that this devil got to go. You know, that the elites are an evil, wicked family. And and when you go into these different colonizations that happen throughout the earth, it's always the elites that got their hands 
in sending, you know, lower level Edomites to do their, their dirty work. You see what I'm saying? South Africa was a colony directed by the queen. The queen gave them orders to go down there because it would have been, uh, 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 how do I put it? It would have been a, a commodity in the fact that it was a common trade route to go through the Horn of, not the Horn of Africa, but through the, the southernmost part of Africa to get on each side of the world, right? To get from in, you can take that route to get from parts of Africa into India, from parts of Asia and India back to the West. So they took that land. It was a highly, it was a highly prized strategic location economically and militarily so they took it they didn't say well you know the most high gave these people their land they've been here for 500 years you know maybe we should just no they took it they made warfare with them zulus and shit and took it you can read about the zulu wars that's how they got south africa man okay but now we see the time where the tables are being turned and the big picture is Yahweh Shai is coming back. So all praise to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.